Hello everyone. Today we are talking about matter and about the groups into which it can be divided. Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. What does that mean? Well, mass is the amount of matter in an object. It's the amount of stuff inside of it. Matter and weight are often considered to be interchangeable, but that's not quite right. Because when you go to the moon, your weight changes because there's less gravity. But your mass, the amount of matter in you, stays the same. So that's matter has to have mass. Then it must also take up space. That's volume. The volume is how much space something takes up. So matter has to take up some amount of space. So examples of things that would not be matter are energy, light, sound waves, uh, things that are matter, electricity, because it's made of atoms. Atoms weigh something, they have mass and they take up space. Uh, air is matter because air is made of tiny gas particles that do weigh something. That's why we have air pressure, the weight of the air, and they do take up space. That's why you have the space of air around you. So matter can be either a substance or a mixture. If it's a pure substance, it's either an element or a compound. And if it's a mixture, it's either homogeneous or heterogeneous. Then finally, a homogeneous mixture is a solution. A heterogeneous mixture is a suspension. And if it's kind of halfway in between, it's a colloid. We'll talk about those in a little bit. First of all, let's investigate a pure substance. A pure substance is both uniform and definite. Okay, what does that mean? Uniform means it's the same throughout. In other words, for example, if you have a cup of coffee and you, the first sip of coffee should taste about the same as the last sip of coffee if you have a well stirred up good cup of coffee. So that would be uniform. Definite means it's always the same. Well, when you get coffee from Walmart versus coffee from McDonald's and coffee from Bojangles, it might taste different. Uh, and so coffee is not definite. Um, so a pure substance has to be both uniform and definite. A substance only has one ingredient. That's how it can be the same all the time. On the other hand, a mixture is not definite. It may or may not be uniform. So the properties of a mixture can vary, can change, because the composition of a mixture, what it's composed of, what it's made of, is not fixed. Mixtures can have different amounts of stuff. A mixture has more than one ingredient. So for example, are each of these substance, a, uh, each of these uh, items a substance or a mixture? Pause your video, take just a minute, and figure out whether each one is a substance or a mixture. All right, so we'll start with pizza. Is pizza uniform? Is pizza the same all the way through? No, it's got cheese, tomato sauce, bread, pepperoni. So mixture fails the uniform test. So it's not a pure substance, it must be a mixture. Grape Kool-Aid, is grape Kool-Aid uniform? Is it the same all the way through the pitcher of Kool-Aid? Well, it should be if you've stirred it up and dissolved the sugar really well. But is it definite? Is grape Kool-Aid the same whether you get the Kool-Aid brand, the grape value brand, or whatever? No, not necessarily. And grandma may make it with two cups of sugar and mom may make it with one cup of sugar because she's trying to be healthy. So pizza, uh, excuse me, Kool-Aid is not definite, therefore it fails the test for a substance. It is a mixture. Wood. If you look uh, at a piece of wood somewhere near you in your home, like your cabinets or your table, you'll notice it has the grain of the wood. And that is not uniform. It's not the same all the way through. Uh, plus, different types of wood are uh, different. So, for example, pine is different from oak, and so wood is a mixture. Copper wire. Copper is an element. It's found on the periodic table. Anything on the periodic table is automatically a pure substance. But if you weren't sure that it was on the periodic table, then you do the tests again. Is copper uniform? 
Now, not including the plastic coating on a copper wire, but just the copper itself. Is that wire the same all the way through the entire wire? Well, sure it is. And is copper wire the same no matter whether you get it from Lowe's or Home Depot or Walmart? Sure it is. So copper is a substance. T depends on who makes it, right? It can be different. It can be sweet, unsweet. Well, not in the South. In the South, it's always sweet, but uh, it can be different depending on who makes it. And so that would be a mixture. And caffeine. Caffeine is one ingredient in the tea. Um, it has actually a chemical formula. You can get pure caffeine. And um, is caffeine always the same, whether it's the caffeine from your Coca-Cola, the caffeine from your coffee, the caffeine from your tea? Sure it is. And so caffeine is a pure substance. All right, next let's look a little more closely at each of these uh, items. First of all, a pure substance is either an element or a compound. An element is a substance that cannot be broken down into simpler substances. If you do, it's not the same thing. It becomes uh, protons, neutrons, and electrons, which need to be together into an element. So a, an element is made of one type of atom. The next page continues. It's supposed to be kind of a chart here. An atom is the smallest particle of an element that retains or keeps the properties of that element. Um, so for example, if I had uh, copper and I cut the copper wire in half and then half and half and half and half, eventually I'd be down to a single copper atom. And that's the smallest particle of copper that still acts like copper. Uh, an element has only one type of atom. All the elements are listed on the periodic table uh, when you look at a periodic table, the symbol for an element, the first letter is always capitalized. If there's a second letter, it's always lowercase. So for example, capital C is carbon, capital C and lowercase l must be chlorine. It's all one, it's not a C and an L, it's not two elements, it's only one. Capital and lowercase a, there's only one capital, so that tells you that's one element, and that's the symbol for sodium. Like, wait a minute. Na for sodium? Where'd they get that? Well, it actually comes from the Latin word natrium. So that was uh, for sodium. And so that's why when they have a weird symbol and you're just not sure where it came from, it's usually the Latin. All right, next, a compound. A compound is a substance made from two or more simpler substances, two or more atoms, chemically combined together. It can be broken down into these simpler substances. You can have a chemical reaction and it can be broken down into its elements or simpler compounds. A compound is made of more than one type of atom. So you must have more than one capital letter to have more than one element. A compound always contains two or more elements in a fixed or definite proportion. For example, water is H2O. There's always two hydrogens and one oxygen. If the ratio becomes H2O2, that's not water. It's something else. In fact, H2O2 is hydrogen peroxide, two hydrogens and two oxygens. So if it has a definite proportion, then that means uh, an element always has that definite proportion. It can't change to have a different proportion or it becomes a different compound. Compounds have different properties from the elements that they are made from. For example, uh, hydrogen is a gas that uh, explodes when it burns, um, so it's flammable. Uh, if you breathe hydrogen gas, it'll give you this fake cough, <laughs> but you'll have to fake cough. It's kind of weird. Um, oxygen is good to breathe. Um, you must have oxygen to live, and it is in the gas form again. But yet, when you put hydrogen and oxygen together to make H2O, it's not a gas anymore, it's a liquid. And you can't breathe it. If you do, you'll be choking. And so uh, it's not good to breathe. You need to drink it. You can't drink hydrogen or oxygen. Uh, it acts totally differently. And so that's what we mean when a compound has very different properties than the elements that they are made from. Uh, another example, sodium, pure sodium. Now, when you say sodium, you mean table salt. But when a chemist says sodium, they mean metallic sodium, pure sodium. Uh, 
which is just that, not NaCl, sodium chloride, which is table salt. So pure sodium metal is uh, actually, strangely enough, it reacts violently with water. You put sodium metal in water and it gets so hot, it burns and explodes, which is kind of weird. Uh, so you have this very reactive metal. Then you have chlorine gas. Chlorine gas is highly toxic and poisonous. Uh, in fact, chlorine gas was what they used in the death chambers in Nazi Germany. So you definitely don't need to be breathing that. When you put sodium, pure sodium and pure chlorine together and they react, then they will produce sodium chloride, which is table salt. Well, sodium is a metal, chlorine is a non-metal and a gas, and table salt is a crystalline ionic compound. So it makes these crystals of table salt. It's white. Uh, chlorine's kind of a greenish yellow. Sodium's a silvery color. Um, so it's just got completely different properties. You can eat sodium chloride. You'll be fine. In fact, you have to have a certain amount of salt in your diet. Most Americans get way too much salt, but that's another issue. Uh, but if you eat pure sodium metal, you're going to explode when it touches the saliva, the water in your mouth. And if you try to eat chlorine gas, you're going to die because you'll be poisoned. So totally different properties when it's a compound versus when it's just an element. Some examples of compounds, as we've already said, sodium chloride. Notice the two capital letters. That's how you know that it's a compound instead of just sodium atoms or just chlorine atoms. H2O, two capital letters again, telling me that I have two elements in water. Na2SO4, capital N, capital S, capital O. So we have three elements, three types of atoms in this compound. Notice we have two sodiums, Na is sodium. Sulfur, we just have one of those because they didn't put a number. And oxygen, we have four of those. And that's the formula, not the formula for baking soda. That is the formula for something else. <laughs> All right. Next, let's talk about homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. If it's a mixture, it's got more than one ingredient stirred together. Not chemically reacted, but just stirred and physically stirred up. So a homogeneous mixture, the substances are so evenly distributed that it's difficult to distinguish one substance in the mixture from another. So it looks very similar all the way through. It is uniform, the same all the way through, but not definite. That's why it's not a substance. It appears to contain only one substance. Uh, when you look at it, you think, oh, that's just one thing. A heterogeneous mixture, on the other hand, the parts of the mixture are noticeably different from one another. You can see the different pieces. A heterogeneous mixture is neither uniform nor definite. It fails both tests. And you can see the different substances. So let's take a look at some of these mixtures we looked at above. Tell whether each of these mixtures, skip the substances, tell whether each of these is homogeneous or heterogeneous. Pause your video now. So pizza, you can see the pepperonis, the cheese, you can see the different parts. So pizza is a heterogeneous mixture. Grape Kool-Aid, it looks the same all the way through. You can't see a difference between the top, the Kool-Aid at the top of the uh, container and the Kool-Aid at the bottom. So uh, grape Kool-Aid is homogeneous. Wood, you can see the grain of the wood, so it is heterogeneous. You can see the different parts. And tea, you cannot see the different parts. It all looks the same all the way through. If it's stirred up well and the sugar is dissolved and you don't have any little bits of tea leaves in there, then that would be a homogeneous mixture. By the way, the way to remember the difference between homogeneous and heterogeneous, and I think you're mature enough to handle this memory trick. A homogeneous mixture looks the same, just like a homogeneous, uh, homosexual couple dates the same sex. Then a heterogeneous mixture looks different, you can see the different parts, and a heterosexual couple dates the different sex than they are. And so that will help you, now you'll never forget how to tell which one is homogeneous and which one is heterogeneous. All right, for these mixtures, now let's look at these other mixtures. Are these homogeneous or heterogeneous? 
once again, pause your video and try to answer these questions. So a salad, you can see the different parts, the lettuce, the tomato, all that. So it is heterogeneous. Coffee, hopefully it's stirred up well. You don't have any coffee grounds. It's uh, the same all the way through the cup. So that would be homogeneous. Brass, brass is a type of metal. It's actually made of a mixture of, I think brass is copper and iron could be copper and zinc. I always get brass and bronze mixed up. So brass, you can't see a different part. It all looks the same all the way through it. Uh, you can have different amounts of those two elements that are stirred together. So that's why it is a mixture, but it looks all the same all the way through. And so therefore it is homogeneous. Pancake syrup. Looks the same, even though you know it's more than you know. It's more than one ingredient. It's made of water and sugar and maple flavoring and that kind of stuff. But it looks like it just has one ingredient, even though it has more than one. So it is a homogeneous mixture. Tap water. Hopefully, tap water uh, is now. It's not entirely pure water because there are some dissolved minerals, a little bit of chlorine to kill the uh, kill the germs. Now, if we say chlorine, we don't mean chlorine gas. We mean uh, a chlorine compound that helps kill the germs. So that's why you don't die when you drink tap water. Also, it's tiny amounts of chlorine. So tap water looks the same all the way through. You can't see the dissolved minerals. You can't see the dissolved chlorine. Um, hopefully, you don't have any chunks and bits and dirt in your water. So even though it looks like a pure substance, it's actually a mixture. But because it looks like one, it's homogeneous. And finally, Italian salad dressing is uh, the type that you have to shake up. So you've got the oil on top and the water on the bottom, plus you have um, uh, all the different spices and bits and pieces of stuff in the dressing. So that is a heterogeneous mixture. Next, let's take a look at some different types of mixtures under the categories of homogeneous and heterogeneous. Uh, an example of a homogeneous mixture is a solution. A solution is a liquid homogeneous mixture uh, when something dissolves in a liquid. For example, salt water, sugar water, or Kool-Aid are all things that are dissolved in the water, making a homogeneous solution. A solution looks clear or see-through, and it does not exhibit the Tyndall effect. Uh, the Tyndall effect is when you can see the beam of light. So here's an example. This is some salt water, some salt dissolved in water. And this is a um, laser pointer. You can see the beam of light. But when you shine it through, you can't see the beam of light. You can see where it comes out the other side there, but you can't see the light going through the water. So the salt water is a solution. The opposite is a suspension, which is a heterogeneous mixture in a liquid. Uh, it is a mixture that separates into layers over time. So muddy water will separate out, mud drops to the bottom, chocolate milk, the chocolate settles to the bottom, paint has to be stirred because the paint settles, paint particles settle, and orange juice with pulp, the pulp settles out. So this is an example of a suspension, it's some muddy water and you can see the mud that's settled to the bottom and you can stir it up and the particles will be temporarily suspended, but then just wait a little bit and they'll fall back down to the bottom and settle out again. Uh, when you shine a uh, laser pointer through, it blocks the beam of light. It can't make it through because uh, the mixture is too clumpy and uh, too many things in there that completely block the light. Uh, so a suspension looks cloudy, it settles out, and it does not exhibit the Tyndall effect. Once again, you couldn't see the beam of light. Uh, you could see it a short distance there, but then it just completely blocked it. Finally, a colloid is a mixture that's kind of halfway in between homogeneous and heterogeneous. The particles are medium-sized. They're big enough that they scatter light, but they're small enough that they never settle out. So here's an example of a colloid. It's muddy water that's been sitting for a while. And when you shine the light, you can see the path that the beam of light takes through the water. And so that is a colloid.
Examples of colloid are fog and mist. You know how you can see the light going through the fog. Um, you can see the beams of your headlights when you're driving through fog. It looks cloudy, but it stays suspended. It does not settle out. Uh, it, as you saw, it exhibits the Tyndall effect. You can see the path of that beam of light as it goes through the colloid. The light is scattered, but it's scattered partially so that you can see it as it passes through the uh, colloid.